Hey Gears Geek, I'm Nick. Today we're checking out another Z590 board, the Z590 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. It's a pretty beefy board with lots of features for a desktop board. So yeah, let's take a closer look. But just remember ladies and gents, our motherboard content and our motherboard videos are not reviews. Let's check this thing out. As usual with our motherboard videos, they are not reviews, they're just overviews so you can get an idea of what comes in the box with one of these new boards and what's physically on the boards. Now the only time these motherboard videos are reviews is when I say it's a review. Otherwise, it's literally just an overview. Anyways guys, let's jump right in and take a closer look. Yeah. All right, ladies and gents, let's check out the Z590 or Z590 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. It's a new 11th gen motherboard for Rocket Lake CPUs. Also supports 10th gen as well, but let's get the motherboard out of the way and take a look at all the things in the box. First up, we've got this sheet of Aorus stickers. It may or may not be your cup of tea. Personally, I don't really care, but yeah, it's there if you really, really want it. There's also the multilingual installation guide. This is a great little reference guide to help you socket the CPU on your motherboard. This actually shows you how to do it on Intel and AMD boards. So yeah, very helpful. There's also this little piece of paper which tells you to install Gigabyte's App Center software because they've removed the disk. So there's no disk or USB stick for drivers. Just go online and grab everything. There's also the infamous Aorus case badge. This thing will give you about 65 billion frames per second at 16K in Fortnite with ray tracing turned on. It's a pretty impressive bit of technology in such a small form factor, right? Here's the user manual for the Z590 or Z590 Aorus Master. The reason why I'm saying Z and not Z and vice versa is because someone made a big point of me pronouncing it wrong because I'm from Australia. Either way I pronounce it, it's going to be wrong. So yeah. Anyways, the manual is basically a way to show you where to plug everything in on your motherboard, what everything is, where it goes and all that jazz. Very helpful guide if you've never built before or if you've built a hundred times. Next up is the antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.0. This is a pretty standard thing you'll find with boards with Wi-Fi. They will include antennas. There's also this. This is a little microphone that when you plug it into your motherboard, it listens to the acoustics inside of your system and can adjust fan profiles based on the sound inside of your system. Very, very handy stuff. Next up, we've got the little G connector. This is a great little thing if you're not quite sure how to plug stuff into your motherboard for the front panel lighting and wiring. You plug it into this little block, straight into your board, and you're good to go. There's also a set of screws for the M.2 slots on this motherboard, and I'm going to explain the layout of these and how they work as well. Next up is two SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. Actually, there's four in total. There's two per pack, but Hey, who's counting? There's also a four pin 12 volt RGB extension cable. This is great if you're running a little light strip in your case and yeah, the cable's not long enough. It's nice that they include this. There's also two thermal probes included. These thermal probes actually measure the temperature inside of your system and you can use it as a reference for like a hot part or a cool part and you can measure the difference between two zones. All right, let's unsheath the Z590 or the Z590 Aorus Master and take a little bit of a closer look at all the things on the board. Are you guys ready? Let's jump right in. There's a front panel audio connector. There's a pair of dual BIOS switches. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header as well as a 12 volt four pin analog RGB header. There's a TPM header. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like AIO coolers and RGB controllers and like Commander Pro from Corsair and that kind of stuff. You will need two of those at least. There's the noise sensor connector, which is that little microphone connector and a reset button. There's also three PWM fan connectors as well as the front panel connector for all your lights and all your switches to let you know that your system is up and running and that it's actually on. There's a set of Thunderbolt headers that will require an additional add-in card to use them. There's also six SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or those old school spinning rush drives. There's a front panel USB type C header. There's two USB 3.2 or 3.0 headers really, and therefore type A ports. There's also a, another PWM fan connector and a 24 pin power connector to send all the juice to your brand new Z590 or Z590 Aorus Master. 
In the top right hand corner of the board there is a post LED screen, there's also a power button, there's another 3 pin 5 volt addressable RGB header, another 4 pin 12 volt RGB header, and 4 PWM headers for fans and AIOs and all that stuff as well. For power delivery there is two 8 pin EPS power connectors to send all your juice to your brand new 11th or 10th gen CPU that's supported on this board and an additional PWM fan connector. Now the keen eyed will actually notice there is an additional PWM fan connector behind that which is connected up to a fan which actively cools the VRM under the IO cover. As far as PCIe slots, they're all by 16 sized. The top one is wired by 16 with Gen 4. The middle one is by 8 Gen 4. And the bottom one is by 4 Gen 3. Z590 or Z590 boards typically do not require an actively cooled chipset. So what you're seeing here is just a giant old heatsink on that brand new Intel chipset. As far as power delivery, there is an 18 plus one digital VRM setup with 90 amp power stages. This VRM cooling is pretty intense, I'm not gonna lie. It's one of the uh, most extreme that we've seen on a desktop board, but it does look very sleek. Hopefully when we put it through its paces a little bit later, we'll find out how good this thing really is. But yeah, there's no way to tell right now. Because this is a Z590 or Z590 board, it features Intel's LGA1200 socket, which supports Intel's 11th and 10th gen CPUs. In terms of your cooling solution, any cooling solution from the past 10 or 12 years will fit on this, no problem. If we flip the board over, we can see that there's a full cover backplate as well. Now these backplates aren't just for aesthetics, they are to help cool the board by spreading out some of the surface area of the components on the backside of these more high-end boards. All right, let's pull all the heat sinks off the top of the board so we can take a bit of a closer look at the M.2 situation and I'll explain how these work because it is different to some of the other Z590 boards we've seen. The top M.2 slot is a PCIe Gen 4 slot and the lower two are PCIe Gen 3s. Now the top slot is actually wired directly into the CPU but you will require an 11th gen CPU for PCIe Gen 4. In terms of memory support it supports 128 gigs of DDR4 RAM overclocked to 5000 megahertz. You heard right? 5000 megahertz. For rear IO, there's a clear CMOS button and a Q flash button for updating your BIOS. There's the antenna connectors for the Wi Fi 6E. There is a lot of USB here. It's all USB 3.2 on the back of this board. There's a lot of it going on here. There's also a DisplayPort 1.4 connector. You'll there's also a USB Type-C port towards the bottom. This board also features 10 gigabit ethernet via an Aquantia adapter, some more USB 3.2. It's also got 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and SPDIF output and an integrated IO shield. But you know what time it is, ladies and gents. It's time to visit our good old mates over at Peel Corp so we can see what they're up to. And once we're done with that, you know what time it is. It's time to engage cinematic mode. Let's do it. Ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of the Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Master. 
This thing's pretty tanky by the looks of it. The VRM is actually pretty uh, up there for a desktop board. 18 plus one phase with 90 amp power stages. Pretty impressive stuff. However, it's pretty hard to say until we actually get our hands on it properly and get some time with using it. We'll probably do some builds with this coming up real soon whenever these new CPUs launch. I don't know anything yet, but yeah. Uh, exciting stuff. Now, if you're interested in the pricing for one of these boards, I did look up the pricing for, in Australia. I think they're going to go between 750 and 800 Aussie dollars in the US hovering somewhere above or below 400 US dollars. But right now there's no availability because they're just not out yet. Actually, we got a, a funny question the other day. Someone asked, how do we get all of these boards before they're released? And like, how do you guys do it? It might have something to do with uh, having a YouTube channel dedicated to the latest tech. So yeah. Obviously you can't buy this stuff pre-launch, so it is sent by Gigabyte. And like MSI sends us boards, Azrock, Asus, all of them, they all send boards pre-launch so we can do this content to show you guys what's coming up. And a lot of people find it pretty exciting because it gives them an opportunity to plan out their build. So they kind of know what they're getting into before all the new stuff comes out as well. But yeah, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available over on Patreon. If you wanna get early access to videos just like this one, over on Floatplane. We've also got some other special stuff planned for Floatplane this year, so stay tuned for that. Also subscribe to our second channel, Mainbyte. We've got a bunch of new content in the works for that channel as well. That's more our lifestyle tech channel and all that kind of stuff and just all the random weird stuff that we wanna play around with, it's over on our second channel, Mainbyte. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And this thing is actually looking pretty interesting. I cannot wait to get a build done with it. And I think for me personally, like, like even though this isn't a review, 10 gigabit ethernet, I think that should be the standard, not 2.5 gig. And I know the networking gear for it's quite expensive, but having it there is pretty cool for people like me who do have 10 gigabit networking setups. Thanks for watching.